Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the centroid of, centroids of volumes and the center of mass via integration. All right, so the centroid of a volume is going to be the geometric center of that shape. So over here, we've got kind of a half cylinder. Uh, I've labeled point C, and point C is the centroid. Uh, the average means that there's going to be equal amount of material to the left and right of this position. There's going to be an equal amount of volume um, above and below this point. There's going to be an equal amount of volume in front of and behind this point. Uh, so we've got kind of split it, and if any way we split it at that point, uh, we're going to have equal volume on either side uh, in this. So that's what the, the geometric center means. All right, so center of mass is going to be similar, uh, except we are averaging by mass rather than volume. Uh, so G is what I usually use for that rather than C for centroid, G for center of mass. And there's going to be an equal mass to the left and right, equal mass above and below this point, equal mass in front of and behind at this point. In cases where the body has a uniform density, so if we've got kind of a single material part, so this is all made of the same steel, um, the center of mass and the centroid are going to be the same point. Uh, it's only when you have kind of variable density, if you've got densities that change with location, uh, you're going to get a, a distinction between center of mass and centroid. But a lot of things are made of a single material, and so we will sometimes kind of treat these centroid and center of mass points as interchangeable because they often wind up at the same point. All right, some of the practical uses for centroids and center of mass. Um, and first of all, the centroid of a volume on its own, not very useful. It's not used very frequently. Um, however, knowing the center of mass is going to be very useful. Uh, and that's whenever we have gravity forces, we often are going to need to know what, where is the center of mass for this body. And that's because gravity is a distributed force. Uh, it acts on all parts of the body. Uh, however, for analysis, we often simplify the gravity force to a single point force that acts at that center of gravity or center of mass uh, point. So G. It's going to act at G. Um, and the reason we care about the centroid of a volume is because they're often the same point. So the centroid of a volume is going to be easier to calculate, and so we're going to use that calculation if possible, and we're only going to pull out the uh, kind of full mathematical uh, equation for a center of mass uh, if it's not going to be the same point as the centroid. All right, so how do we find the centroid of a volume via integration? So it is the average x-coordinate, the average y-coordinate, and the average z-coordinate. So we're finding averages here. And so to find the average x-coordinate of a number of different points in 3D space, we would simply take all of those x-coordinates. So if, say I've got 10 points, so I take all the x-coordinates, uh, add those together, and divide by the total number of points. So if I've got 10 points, I divide by 10 on the bottom. Uh, so that's the definition of an average. Uh, we're going to do something similar here to find x-bar uh, for a overall volume. So if we treat the shape as a collection of small volumes, uh, we can replace the sum on the top there with the first volume moment integral. Uh, it's going to integrate all of those uh, small volumes, and we replace the total number of points with the total volume of the shape. So we're going to wind up with something like this. We're going to integrate all the x-coordinates across the entire volume and divide by the entire the kind of the net or total volume on the bottom there. So this is the moment integral that we are going to be taking for the centroid. All right, and looking at this, um, we would have you know, similar equations for y and z. Here we are looking at the z coordinate of the centroid of a cone. So we've got a cone over here, uh, and it's going, if I want to know, say, z bar, I'd go from z min to z max. So I'm going to be moving uh, from the bottom to the top. Uh, and same thing, x and y would be the most negative x-coordinate to the most positive x-coordinate, and so on. Uh, so you're going from one end to the other along the desired axis. Uh, you're going to be multiplying by um, dv. And so dv is the equation describing the cross-sectional area of the shape at any given value of z. So we're going to talk about that more here in a second. Uh, and then uh, z is obviously just uh, z as a variable. Um, and it gets into the integral. And then uh, the 
uh, bottom, it's just going to be the total volume of your shape. So you'd look up volume of a cone, figure that out, uh, and that's after the uh, integration part happens, you divide by the total volume. All right, so let's talk about this dv term. Uh, so where's the rate of change of area, dA, in our 2D integration was equal to the height of the shape at any given value of x or the width of the shape at any given value of y. So we had dA in x was height, uh, dA in uh, the y direction was width. Uh, here we are looking at dV. So the dV is going to be the rate of change of the volume and it's going to be equal to the area of a cross section at any given value of x or any given value of y or any given value of z. So this means that we need to find a formula that describes the area for the cross section at any given x value or y value or z value. So if we look back here, uh, our dv, the cross section of a cone at any kind of given z height is going to be a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared uh, and then from there uh, r is not something we want to leave in there. We want to define r in terms of z. So uh, that radius is going to go down linearly and so we could uh, write an equation for the radius at a given value of z, plug that into pi r squared. Uh, all of that is going to get multiplied by z and then we take the integral of that whole mathematical function. So these can get uh, a little more complicated. There's definitely going to be in some calculus involved. Um, but if you can mathematically model that cross-sectional area uh, and it's changing over time, then you can uh, calculate the centroid. All right, so for bodies that are symmetrical about a particular axis, we can take a shortcut. Um, so the centroid is simply going to lie along any plane of symmetry. And so here, um, we don't have to carry out all the integrals. We can be smart and only do as much integration as we need to. So if I look at my cone uh, and I put something on the yz axis, so I've got kind of front and back, and the front and back I'll notice are mirror images of one another. And so when that occurs, well the centroid, if there's an equal volume uh, in front of and behind something uh, along that line of symmetry, the centroid has to exist on that line of, or that plane of symmetry. So I can do the same thing in the x direction. So if I look at the x direction, uh, I can draw a plane of symmetry right down the middle. The left and the right are mirror images. And so I know that the centroid has to exist along that plane. And so the only one that doesn't work is I can't draw something flat. Uh, so there's no way to cut it kind of as a flat cross section like this in the xy plane uh, or anything parallel to the xy plane where it's going to be mirror images. So if I had that, it'd be kind of like a, if I kind of moved it up, it'd be like an hourglass shape or move it down, it's going to be almost like a football uh, shape. So there's nothing that's a mirror image uh, about this cone. There's no way to make the top and bottom mirror images. So that's the one I actually have to calculate uh, in the xz plane and yz plane, the earlier ones. Uh, those are symmetrical, so I don't have to do the integration. I can just know that the centroid lies in this plane the centroid lies in this plane because it's symmetric symmetry. Uh, the centroid, I don't have a way to just kind of assume the centroid is somewhere in this plane. All right, so next, finding the center of mass. So uh, if we switch from the centroid of a volume uh, to the mass in our mass or moment integrals, we simply need to multiply all the volumes by the density of the material. So density times volume, uh, and so I throw a density times volume would be mass, density times dv would be dm, the rate of change of mass, uh, and that's all well and good. This gets us to the center of mass calculation, uh, which is be xg, yg, and zg. Um, and so this is our general calculation. And the reason we these are the same point is if the density is just a, a constant, um, I can bring it outside the integral on the top. I have density on the top of this fraction, density on the bottom, and so I wind up with just the same What's left over basically after I cancel out the densities is the same centroid calculation I did earlier. Uh, so the density makes it more complicated, um, but we can kind of ignore it if it's just a, a constant. All right, so in cases of non-uniform density though, um, where it kind of varies with position, um, 
we're gonna have a density function. So density is not a set value, it, it's a uh, function that depends on the x, y, and z coordinate, or can just depend on kind of x or y or z. Um, some combination of those vari variables, you're gonna have a equation that tells you the density at that point. So that remains in the integral, and so this makes things more complicated. So dv, same thing we did for centroids, uh, x, we multiply that, but now we've got this separate density function uh, that I need to add to my integral. Uh, that, and I'm also going to vary it, so rather than the volume being on the bottom of this fraction, I'm going to have the mass on the bottom of this fraction. All right, so density function can get um, complicated, um, and it, like I said, it can vary with any direction. It can vary with all three directions, or it can just vary with a single uh, direction. I can have kind of a gradient of densities. All right, so uh, ZG is the position of our uh, center of mass in the Z direction. Uh, and again, min and max Z values here are density function, describing the density at any X, Y, and Z position, DV. Uh, equation describing the cross-sectional area. This is the same um, equation that I would have used for the centroid and total mass of the object. All right, that's all we have for calculating the centroid of a volume and center of mass via integration. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.